In this tutorial, we are gonna take a look at a couple of new enhancements that were added into Photoshop 2020. My name is Matt Laskowski. welcome to the latest video, and join me, I will not sing, but join me in wishing Photoshop a happy 30th birthday. It's, uh, it seems it's catching up to my age, slowly but surely, very, very slowly, <laughs> anyway. Um, so let's go jump over onto into Photoshop. This is February, mid-February of 2020. Keep in mind, Adobe does their big release um, every fall, usually at Adobe Max. So you're not gonna get a big release now. Consider this just a little bonus update where they've enhanced a couple of features, but one of them is really good, which is why I wanted to dedicate a video to it. Content aware. We usually take our lasso tool and we can go in here and we can lasso something to fix. Problem is, is there's more than one thing I wanna fix. Well, I used to have to go into edit content aware fill and I would go in here and I could, you know, I could use my little sampling brush and I could adjust what Photoshop considers as a fix for here. And that, that's, this has been around for a while. However, the problem was if I had something else in the photo, I used to click OK and I would have to do this process all over again. But now if you look in the bottom right hand corner, I have an apply button. So now I can click apply. It'll fix that area and it leaves me in here. Now I can go back to the lasso tool and I can come in here and I can lasso another section and I can repeat this whole process all over again. So I don't have to continuously come in and out here. So in this example here, I would probably, Adobe's got some AI that goes in here and tries to figure out your edges of what you want. Sometimes it does a good job. Sometimes it goes a little too close for me. So we can subtract from that. Remember this green area is simply what Photoshop is considering. I won't do a full content aware tutorial. It's out of the scope of this update video, but um, you can see as I go through here, I can paint some more areas in green and tell Photoshop, hey, I want you to consider these things as well. All right? And you'll see over here on the right hand side, it'll start to update uh, as you start to paint more or less in there. Now, this isn't a new feature, but you can always go over here and you can add or subtract from it too. You can hold down your option or alt key and you can go in there and subtract, or you can hold down your shift key and you can go in there and add and that'll change that selection. So you don't even have to exit here for that. Again, that's not new. What's new is the apply button. So yeah, I only had two things in this photo, but imagine you had 10 and how much of a pain in the neck it would be to come down here and click okay every single time and then have to go in and lasso something else, okay? So that's the, uh, that's the first enhancement. To me, that's a big enhancement. Uh, content aware fill is really one of the primary reasons I go over into Photoshop. So to have that ability is, is, is pretty big. The next thing you're gonna find under the filter menu for lens blur. Uh, before we get there really quick though, a very fast word from our sponsor. So the sponsor is me. I, I have a Photoshop course, I actually just totally redid my Photoshop system. Um, I brought it up to speed and brought the price down for version 2020. So uh, all new videos, uh, new everything, all to cover the, the newest, latest version of Photoshop. You can find out more over at mattk.com slash Photoshop system, but this really is a Photoshop well, system for lack of a better word. It's a systematic approach to learning it. Uh, if you watch my intro video, the one where I'm wearing that Park City shirt, it, it actually tells you, you know, there's different learning styles and ways to approach this. From high level, I just, you know, give me, give me some quick tips to really diving in deep about a topic and then workflow. How do you put all of these topics together in a good raw workflow so you'll know exactly when to use Photoshop. And if you don't do anything, do me a favor, Swing by the site, watch this top video. If you're fairly new to learning Photoshop, I promise you the concept that I cover in this top video will help learn, help make learning Photoshop so much easier. Okay, back to our story here. So the other new thing here, what we're gonna do is you could still see a little bit of a seam and kind of just some splotchiness there. So if Content Aware ever does that, which it sometimes does, I'll usually follow it up with a quick lasso selection and then I'll soften that edge here. I'm gonna to go to select modify feather. This is not new at all. I'll do it by about 20 pixels, which just softens that edge there. But when we come up here to the filter menu and you go to blur, we've got something called lens blur, all right? Lens blur has been around for a while. It is a way to achieve a, a more realistic 
blur in your photos if you wanted to simulate depth of field. So what Adobe's done is they've enhanced uh, the realism of the bokeh that you get from lens blur. Uh, the so You get softer edges from some of the areas that you're blurring. Again, this all has to do with the realism of the bokeh that you get inside of here. And then they've, uh, they've actually significantly improved the performance. They've put it over onto the GPU, which makes it a lot faster because that was a big... Um, that was a big complaint about lens blur is it was a fairly slow filter. We're not going to use any of that, although you can create depth maps that allow you to selectively blur things as they fall off into the distance. We're simply going to go up here to radius. And this is a pretty large megapixel file, so it actually took pretty quick. But I'm just going to crank up my radius here just to soften some of those edges uh, that were back there in that top right corner. And we'll click OK. Again, you can see it's applied it pretty quickly there as well. So if you are a lens blur user, uh, it's just gotten a lot better and it's also gotten a lot faster. Okay. Last thing here is uh, dark UI support. This is only for Mac. If you're on the Mac and you go to your general preferences and you are using dark UI, which I am not, I guess I'm just a creature habit. I like the bright UI, but inside of Photoshop, um, because I haven't changed the dark UI, when I go to save as you're actually going to see it's using the light UI. Okay, and it would have done that even if I had dark UI selected for the operating system before this update. But now it'll honor your dark UI settings, so all of the UI will be dark. Lastly, let's head over to Adobe's website. I want to show you, you can get a quick rundown of the features here. Um, one of the things that they have done is performance improvements, uh, mostly on larger documents when you're moving around those larger documents. But the last thing I'm not going to cover is Photoshop on the iPad. I'm actually one of those, I don't know if it's a rare person or not. I don't want Photoshop on the iPad. I want a big screen. Photoshop is where I'm going when I need to do more than just moving around sliders and things. And for me, the iPad is a very prohibitive workflow. Um, so I don't really want Photoshop on the iPad, but a lot of people do. Obviously, most people are not like me. So they've done some updates to this. They've uh, added the object selection tool and a couple of other things on there. So you can find out more about those updates. I'll make sure I post a link uh, to where this website is over in the description. I do hope you'll swing by. Check out my page at mattk.com slash Photoshop system. Again, I mentioned earlier, I do believe I have a very good system to learn Photoshop. And if you're a newcomer to Photoshop, I believe it can really help out quite a bit. Thanks so much for watching, folks. And I will talk to you again real soon.